I've been testing ChatGPT 5 for the past 24 hours straight, and I have some mixed opinions. On one hand, I do believe they have made great strides from the previous models, but on the other hand, I actually think some things have regressed, and a lot of people have been calling this a massive disappointment. So today, I wanna unpack all of the changes from ChatGPT 5, what I've noticed from personally using it over the last 24 hours, and I'm gonna give you my overall verdict as to whether this deserves your hard earned money or if you should maybe consider alternative models. So I'm gonna begin by going through all of the features and the benchmarks for ChatGPT 5 so you know everything that is jam packed into this LLM. Then I'm gonna go through some of my subjective opinions and then look at a comparison versus other LLMs. By the way, if you are new to the channel, my name's Miles and I'm the host here on AI Edge. Make sure you subscribe so I can help you get the edge in AI and investing in AI. This is a new channel that I've started to share my knowledge that I've been building over many years of using, experimenting and building applications with AI. I wanna share that knowledge with you to help you become a better AI investor and a better AI user. Without further ado, let's get into the rest of the video. So, ChatGPT is finally here. The wait is over. Obviously, it's been anticipated for quite some time since the release of 4.0. Obviously, since then, we've had other mini models releasing. We had 03, which ended up being my favorite model. I'll get into this later. I'm actually a little bit sad that it's not included anymore, even though it is similar to 5.0. There were some things that I think, you know, for my personal needs, it did slightly better, but they have kind of combined everything into one package here. So I think one of the first things you'll notice is that when you go into ChatGPT, there is no more uh, deciding between what model you're gonna use. So I think one thing that confused a lot of people was, is 4.0 the best model? Is it three? Is it, you know, 4.1? Like there were just so many model names that have confused a lot of people. I think they've really gone for the commercial approach here and they're trying to please the masses by just lumping it all into ChatGPT 5. You'll notice on the app there are technically three options. There's GPT 5, which is the base one that default loads when you open the app. There's GPT 5 thinking. This is gonna give you slightly more in-depth answers and flesh things out a little bit more than the standard GPT 5. Could be better for some writing tasks, for example. And then there is GPT 5 Pro, which is your pro research version. These answers take quite a lot longer than the standard GPT-5 and GPT-5 thinking, but this is gonna be your smartest model. So if you're trying to unpack a really complex work problem, a complex math solution, if you're mapping out financial data, GPT-5 Pro might do a slightly better job, but I think for the average daily use, GPT-5 is going to be the best one, although I did enjoy using the thinking variant as well as I started to map out more complex uh, solutions to some problems that I had. But uh, beginning here with a quick recap of what ChatGPT 5 actually introduces versus the prior models. The first thing that becomes really evident when using ChatGPT 5 is the speed. As you can see in front of you, I've simulated here a basic question on GPT 4 versus GPT 5 and GPT 5 tends to answer a lot quicker, up to 50 to 70% quicker for a lot of questions with more accuracy versus other models. It is a lot faster than 03. 03 was pretty slow at times, Five is a lot faster and it basically gives you the same, if not a slightly better quality answer and takes less time to arrive at that answer. So that is one of the obvious things that you're gonna notice when you start using ChatGPT 5. It's not just the speed, the benchmarks are quite impressive. If you look at its capabilities in terms of problem solving, in terms of mathematics, it does beat a lot of other models coming in stronger on math, coding, thinking than 03 and 4.0. I'm going to get into it, a comparison with Grok and Claude and some of the other models later, but one thing that we can certainly assert already is that it is the best, smartest, and fastest model that OpenAI has ever released. Now where GPT-5 really starts to shine is coding in the testing that I did and I haven't had time to spend a full weekend vibe coding which I'm going to do uh, very soon. But from the basic testing that I did this morning, some of the basic coding tasks that I typically would do, so you know Python, JSON, etc., and like coding for mini web applications and mobile interfaces, all of this is a lot more accurate with less hallucinations than the other chat GPT models. Now, I still don't think it's better than Claude. I actually think Claude 4.1 is extremely strong and probably still is 
overall the best coding model, but I think it does depend on your niche. So if you are a coder, obviously you'll want to dive in and see what it can do better than Claude. But to me, uh, a longtime Claude user, I didn't see the immediate advantage over it in the short time that I've had uh, spending coding on GPT-5. However, I definitely did see an, an increase, obviously over 4.0, which wasn't that good, and uh, also 03 as well. So it's definitely better, but I don't think it was the game-changing release that some people were hoping it would be on the coding front. You can see though, that the hallucinations are significantly down, which is a good thing because 4.0 hallucinated a lot, so did 03, and I did notice that the accuracy of responses overall uh, was quite high compared to other models, but it's still making some mistakes. You've probably seen some tweets go viral with some mistakes, like we're certainly not in AGI territory yet, although GPT-5 is a lot smarter it's definitely not the perfect model by any means. Another feature that I think people will enjoy with GPT-5, and this is pretty good from a user experience point of view, uh, once again, I really think they're going after the retail consumer with GPT-5 because they've combined the models to make it simple and they've added a fully multimodal experience. Now, what this means is that you can now interact with text, images, audio, and video all at once. For example, you can snap a photo, send it in, ask about it, get a voice response back, AKA multimodal, upload a document for context and continue the discussion without switching modes or losing context like you would previously. So this is an extremely seamless integration, which I think is good for people that are on the go, want a voice prompt, want to add documents for context, want voice answers back, then want to change their answers and put all sorts of different input in. So audio, video, image, text, it can all be done in the one chat. Now, I think that is helpful. Maybe the average person doesn't utilize that a lot, but for creatives, I think they are going to notice the benefit. Speaking of creatives, you're probably wondering, is it better for image gen than the prior models? And I must say that there's not a huge increase. I don't really think that was a focus with GPT-5. It seems like they're focused on getting a little bit of additional power, a better user experience, and a bit more speed, less hallucinations, nothing groundbreaking on the video front, not like, you know, Gemini's latest release or Grok's latest release either. Either. So that is probably going to come as an add-on later. I don't think that was a focus, but nothing crazy on the image gen. Maybe image gen is a little bit faster, but I didn't really notice a big increase and we're certainly not in AGI territory on that front. It does have a few hidden features though. Uh, it's now got built-in personalities and accent colors. So you can switch GPT's tone with a click. You can also customize your colors as well. There's an improved advanced voice mode. So the conversation I noticed was a little bit better. The responses aren't as jittery, you can hold a conversation a bit faster and a bit more seamless, which is good. And one thing people will like, especially users of Gemini and the Google suite, is that there is now uh, fully fledged app integrations and persistent memory across things like Gmail, Google Calendar, uh, this project specific memory, which we already had, but I think it does a little bit better with GPT-5 and personal preferences are now supposed to stick. I haven't really used it for long enough to see whether over time this makes a difference, but there are supposed to be improvements on the content context on GPT-5. Now, this is uh, where I have to be honest with you and, and give you some candid opinions. Not everything with GPT-5 is totally groundbreaking. In fact, it was extremely hyped up prior to the launch, but on launch, I think a lot of people were let down by the fact that um, not everything that was announced was groundbreaking. I mean, it was a nice package, but maybe wasn't that quantum leap ahead that people were hoping for. And this is reflected in the betting markets, poly market, which is a prediction market, where the odds of OpenAI having the best AI model by the end of August plummeted to sub 20%, whilst Google, who are anticipating a new model in the very near future, skyrocketed to over 80%. So the market thinks that Google's new release is going to trump ChatGPT5 and that ChatGPT5 wasn't groundbreaking enough to maintain OpenAI the lead here. So the market and betting markets are sometimes the best way to get an idea of the community opinion uh, is not responding too well to the GPT-5 release. Now, I'll give you some personal thoughts and some personal qualms that I have. I, I did this tweet earlier. I said, the more I use GPT-5, the more let down I feel. And the reason I tweeted this is because I do a lot of financial market research on GPT. So I would use it a lot for crypto research and I came to love O3, uh, which had free integrations and APIs with a lot of the like crypto websites, stock market websites, etc. For some reason, GPT-5 doesn't want to pull data for free online. It makes you plug in JSON profiles, run Python code in order to put in webhooks that previously it seemed to already 
have. So I don't know if you'll experience this, maybe you're not doing advanced analytics or market research, but when I was researching, I found it painful because it was asking me for webhooks that O3 seemed to automatically calibrate. So it took a lot more time and it caused me to have to put my APIs in manually. Now, once I put the APIs in manually, it ran very smoothly. And in fact, the answers were actually better than O3 and uh, 4.0, but that little bit of friction is quite annoying. The other thing that I find a little bit annoying is that there isn't much flexibility. Now, I totally get why they've done this. They want to make the most wide appealing LLM on the market, and they wanted to simplify everything under the GBT5 umbrella instead of having, you know, a bunch of models people could uh, flick between, which honestly confused a lot of people. A lot of people like, wait, why is three better than four? That doesn't make any sense. And I agree, the numbering was a bit weird, but not having as much flexibility is a tad annoying because I like switching between 4.0 if I wanted a basic text response, O3 if I wanted something a bit more in depth and then O3 pro for research and then I had the mini models if I ever wanted to do writing it felt like everything was you know super tweaked to specific needs now maybe if you're not an avid AI user or researcher this doesn't matter so much maybe you prefer everything being under one hood but I do wish we had a little bit more flexibility here and I think they may add that in the future and maybe this is just because I'm a creature of habit right so I feel a little bit out of my comfort zone now but I found myself going to the top of the page going to switch to a model that I really realized wasn't even there. And honestly, it's kind of sad. I got really used to over a long period of time using these models. And now I feel like I'm being forced to readjust. Overall though, that readjustment has been positive in some ways. The responses are much quicker. I find overall creating tables is a lot easier. Basic research is a lot easier. Um, the basic coding that I've done is hallucinating a lot less, but it has come with some trade-offs. I don't think it's as customizable. I don't think it's as groundbreaking as some people would have liked. And I'm getting some issues on the webhook front. Um, I also don't think they made quantum leaps ahead with video. And overall, in terms of the smartness of the model, so to speak, I also don't think they've like completely blown away the competition. Like if you want to compare it to other models, Claude is still extremely strong on the coding front. I don't see a compelling reason if you use Claude to actually switch to ChatGPT. Grok is actually still, especially Super Grok, which of course you've got to pay extra for, the smartest model in the world technically. And I feel like Grok's research capabilities, especially for real-time research, is actually better. Actually finding like uh, catalysts and news announcements and that sort of stuff for my market research on GPT was a little bit glitchy, whereas Grok seems to be able to identify real-time news data a little bit better. That's probably because the sheer quantity of tweets that are going through the platform is enabling it to uh, scrape the platform faster and more efficiently. But I still find Grok extremely useful for that. So I have no compelling reason to switch over there. And Gemini, I still think even though GPT has the new Google integration, still has the most seamless integration with the Google ecosystem. And I still do enjoy using uh, Gemini as well. So am I still gonna be using ChatGPT? Absolutely, I still use it every single day. I still find it the best for ideation, for creative stuff, general use, general prompting, light coding, and general research. That is still how I'm gonna use it, but I'm still gonna be using Claude a ton. I'm still gonna be using Grok a ton. So the way that I'm using these LLMs basically hasn't changed. I'm gonna be doing a video very soon, which breaks down which LLM I use for each task. And this will be extremely relevant as Grok continues to ship new updates and we can look forward to Gemini's new flagship model. So my overall verdict is ChatGPT 5 in isolation, it is a good model and it's one of the best models in the world. It might be the most user-friendly model in the world, but if you are hoping for a massive leap forward, unfortunately, this was not the update that you were probably hoping for. If you wanna stay ahead of the curve with AI, make sure to subscribe to the channel so I can help you get an edge in AI and the investable AI market. I will see you in the next video. Peace out.